Jay here for Stratford Paddock. This is it. This is the big one. Manchester United travelling to Sellers Park to play Crystal Palace in the Premier League. Joining me, as always, is my good friend, Joe Smith. Yeah. Joe, United are back. Back in business. Yeah. Crystal Palace as well. Inarguably the most lugubrious or salubrious name of any team in the Football League. Nice Crystal name. Palace. Yeah, yeah. Do you what know does what I mean? that mean to you, Crystal Palace, when you think of that? I think a big, on top of a hill, ancient kind of like Lord of the Rings style, you've reached the Crystal Palace and it's you all think? shining and glimmering in the sun. Really? It's on the top of the hill and that's where all the uh, elves live. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, what do you think? I think of like the most dirtiest, grittiest bingo hall ever. Do you I know what an M was? I've never been to Crystal Palace. Yeah, it sounds like it's just like in the middle of the town somewhere where you never go and it's like, there's like four people in it. Yeah. And the, 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 the winning prize is like three quid. The winning prize is being able to leave. Yeah. <laughs> It's at the Hotel California. Um, anyway, enough of that nonsense. Let's yeah. talk about Manchester United having some good results recently. Yeah. In no small measure, thanks to our front three, mm. who have been either scoring goals, creating goals, or at least causing the opposition problems. Um, you got some statties, because you are a little stat nerd, yeah. about our front three. We were speaking about this on Off the Bar the other day. We'll speak about it again, because I'm not going to get too carried away. You have to look at the quality of the opposition, but... You want your, your attackers to score and create chances, and that's what these are doing. Yeah, United have had a real problem scoring goals in the last couple of years. Yeah. Certainly last year under Ten Hag, and mm. even the first year wasn't great. And it's something that we haven't completely turned around with five games into the season. But we're starting to see uh, some improvements. Garnacho's already got three goals and three assists, and he's only started two games. Uh, Rashford has got three goals, one assist in five appearances, which, again, a couple of those were against um, Barnsley. Barnsley. But, that do, we weren't getting those last season. No, nope. regardless of who we played, people weren't chipping in the way that they have done so far. Scoring seven, scoring three um, in the last two games, ten goals in two games is good. And you, you, obviously, yeah. you're not going to play against Man City every week. Sometimes you get draws against easier teams in the cup. Sometimes you play in the Europa League. Like it doesn't matter how the goals come about; they don't count for less because they're against Southampton. Uh, and and, um, and Barnsley. So the fact that these guys are scoring and, and Ahmad as well has only got one goal and one assist, which you know isn't necessarily great. But I think he's uh, made the most chances of anyone in the United side. He's bringing the ball forward better than anyone in the United side. He's across the board in terms of winning the ball back high up the pitch, passes in the final third. Is leading the Manchester United squad so far this season. So he's been putting a shift in as well when he's not really been a regular for United ever before. Now he's coming in and he's doing that. And then the rotation in Garnacho is leading the way in terms of goals and assist like this is what we want and we want we said it before the start of the season Arsenal they regularly have Saka Martinelli Odegaard or Jesus or Havertz or you know these sort of five players three of them will get 15 goals a season and United are getting seven sixes fives tens elevens twelves if Rashford Garnacho and then one of Ahmad Bruno Xerxes Hoyland can get 15 goals this season or more hopefully yeah. you know double that we'll, we've got such a better chance uh, of, of finishing top four and winning a trophy. So long may it continue, even if it's Garnacho off the bench. If he can, be, I think it's a goal or assist every 35 minutes from at the minute. Yeah. Brilliant. I know it's, it's annoying, isn't it? Because all our attackers, you can see the talent is there. Yeah. I think there's only may, maybe Anthony where I question whether he's actually good enough. I think the others, it's just consistency. I think with Garnacho, sometimes the consistency can desert him. Ras Rashford's had massive issues around consistency, although, you know, both the, both those players, like I said, this season have, have done well. Ahmad Diallo is a player that really excites me. So yeah, I think that those players we've mentioned and Joshua Zerksi and Hoyland's come back in as well. It, it, we know he's been back in training. We're going to get to predict the 11s in a minute, but I don't know if he's going to start this game. He'd probably come off the bench if he is available yeah. because obviously he's he's not not played yet this season. And it's not like we're desperate for Rasmus Hoyland to go back into the team. Um, let's talk a little bit about one of your favourite topics. Go on. The uh, 1990s show featuring Tim Allen. Home. Home improvement. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, do you remember that? Yeah. Um, with his mate over the fence and the back, back wall. Um, Wilson? That was, I think that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. very, very good. Um, United are improving. Yeah. And I'm not even going to caveat it with anything. No. Nope. We're improving. We are. We're right? definitely improving. We're getting better. We are. We're better than we were last season. We've been... It, 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 take the Liverpool game out of it. Yep. The other four games this season, even the one we lost to Brighton, we've been better than we were in the corresponding fixtures last year. Agreed. 
Like we played worse against Brighton and got a result the season yeah. before. And, and obviously we didn't play Barnsley last season, but we did play Newport County, which who, is the same thing. Who we were two 0 up against, conceded two goals to make it two all, and it took you know late goals for us to win four two. We, did, we were three 0 up against Coventry. Yeah, and we ended up drawing three all, and we won on penalties. Like it, it, yeah, we have, we don't play Barnsley every week, but we've played equivalent teams and really struggled. Yeah, um, and I think like the games against Brighton where we got. I mean, later on in the season we did pretty well, but we've been outclassed by them a couple of times in recent years. Um, and even the game against Fulham where I thought United played well, it's better. We're conceding less shots, we're making more chances. I think uh, only a couple of teams have made more big chances than us this season. Like, we're doing better. And we have to accept that. And whether it's good enough, and Ronaldo always says this, whether the jump from 10th to where we are now might only see us finish 5th or 6th. And if that's the case, maybe that's Ten Hag's limit. We have to start asking big questions. But for now, let's enjoy the fact that there is improvement. Because last year, it was all downhill. We scored less goals. We conceded more goals. It was 20 shots a game against us. No one scored any goals. No one got 20 goals plus. And we finished 8th. Let's enjoy the fact that I know obviously you can't enjoy too much. It's two wins, two losses in the league. That's not amazing. We don't all you know jump up and down at that. But that the improvement on the performances is there, and if that can turn into you know we win eight of our next eleven games, then you'll start to see the improvements in terms of points as well. And I think this team is good enough, and we've got better. That's the thing that really impresses me. Yeah, definitely. And let's try and be a little bit positive. We've had yeah, I'm sick on. of moaning. I'm, we've moaned a lot as United fans, and rightly so, because you've seen what we've had to endure over the last year or so. But when there are positive signs, then uh, you know we can we can talk about that. Uh, with all that being said, let's talk predicted 11s. These are the teams. Yes. Or the team you think is going to start at Sellers Park. It's not necessarily the one you want to see, but the one you think you will see. So talk us through it. Yeah, and uh, Ten Hag spoke in his press conference about Mount and Hoyland being available. Yeah, maybe. but it they're going to do like a check in. Start, does it? Yeah, and I'd be very surprised if they start. And if they do, obviously, you know, I'll be wrong, but I, I, you know, all balance of probability, I don't think they will. Uh, so I've gone with um, Onana, Mazraoui, Delict, Martinez, Dallo. I think while Luke Shaw's I'd, out, that's our best back I'd, four. I'd be amazed if that back five. Yeah, was wrong. Yeah. It, that does seem to be the preferred choice. As far as we know, no one's injured and they've had some success this season. Yeah. You look at the Southampton game. Absolutely. Uh midfield, I've brought I've kept Ugarte in. Um, I think he'll I think he'll start you guy. I think yeah. you're right. That midfield three, Maynu, I think he didn't play against um uh, Barnsley for yeah. a reason. He's gonna start this game. Bruno Fernandez again played 25 minutes or whatever it was against Barnsley, keep him fresh, keep him ticking over, but you know he's going to be playing this game as the club captain. And then I've stuck with the front three um, that has been successful in the league. Uh, Rashford, Ahmad and Xerxes, I think, again, if Hoyland's not ready to start, which he's probably not, keep Xerxes playing, he's playing well, and he helps with that link-up play. Rashford, again, I said this the other day um, on the debate show, but our aim for this season, if you're one of the coaches, if you're Ruud van Nistel or if you're Ten Hag, is to get that 30 goal a season Marcus Rashford back. Because everything else, whether it's Xerxes, Ahmad, Anthony, Garnacho, you can like them as much as you want, you're guessing whether they're capable of that. You're hoping they're capable of that. With Rashford, you know he is. He's had multiple 20 plus goal seasons, he's had a 30 goal season for United. Get that back. So for me, he has to play. Because there's one thing, oh, you drop him, he's, he's got less goals than Garnacho. Da, da, da. Yeah, but what can Rashford do for you? You know he can do that. The aim has to be to get that back. So for me, he has to start as well. Um, and Ahmad, maybe he'll go Garnacho, but I think he'll stick with Ahmad personally. I agree almost to a, a man. I, and I get your reasoning behind it all. And uh, you yeah, the the midfield. I think your guy comes in, I think he'll be fine to start this game. I think the, 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 the defence is settled. The attack-wise, the only difference I've gone for, and I don't want to see this, by the way. I want to see Ahmad Diallo start. Nothing against Ganacho. I love him, but I love uh, Diallo too. And I think Diallo, for me, should start. Yeah. I just wonder whether, because Ganacho scored when he came on against yeah. Southampton and got that brace against Barnsley, the, the combined parts of that, the fact he scored when he came on in the Premier League and carried it on, might just be enough for the managers to go, do you know what? You're going to start. Because let's not forget... Whilst I love Diallo and I think he should start the game, Garnacho was one of Ten Hag's guys last season. Yeah. He started almost every game for Ten Hag. Yeah. So it's not like he doesn't look at Garnacho as a good option. And Diallo was one of those where it wasn't that long ago we were going, does the manager even fancy him? It, at one point, it didn't look like he did. 
Yeah. Now, however, and I think Diallo, you know, you saw his performance against Southampton. I think the most chances created um, by any Manchester United player in the Premier League for years. I just wonder whether the manager might look at it and go, it, mm, it's 50 50, I'm going to go with Ganacho. Yeah. I think it's closer that, with those two than some of us may if, believe. If you're a player, and obviously this wouldn't happen, but Ganacho at the minute is so fruitful off the bench. Yeah. He's literally getting you know multiple goals and assists per 90 minutes at the minute. It's like amazing. And yet the games he started, he's looked a little bit off the pace. Mm. The Liverpool game, he struggled. Um, and he's looked a little bit kind of cagey at times in the Premier League, mm. certainly. Um, and yet there seems, there's a sort of stigma about coming off the bench and being successful. Would you rather be a player that, let's say, scored 12 goals in a season but you're starting most weeks, or you scored 15 goals in a season but 70% of your appearances are off the bench? Like, the, the, Do you think it's such a bad thing to be carrying on this kind of momentum off the bench you've got, or do you think you have to reward it with a start? I, I think the problem you've got, I get your point in answer to your question. I'd, I'd rather be a super sub that scores goals, and most of those goals because you're a sub, you're coming on and getting winning goals and things yeah. like that. The issue you've got with Ganacho is because he's had this season where he started so many games, yeah. and now he, he he started off as a sub. He got into the first team. He played a lot of games, started a lot of games, from like 30 games on the spin. He started for yeah. Eric Ag. Now you've got to try and sell him the idea that him being dropped out of the bench isn't a demotion. Mm. Like you're so good as a sub that's what it is not that you're not good enough to start that might be in the manager's mind a little bit because you've got to keep your players happy mm. and there might be a part of guy that show the things hang on a minute i started off as a sub i came off the bench in those games against fulham if you remember that first season i came off the bench against manchester city and absolutely destroyed him i did those those moments and i had those moments then i got into the team where i started i played almost every game for you gave my all had some you know again more big moments now this season i'm out he might be a little bit miffed with it. I don't know. He's a good kid, Garnacho. The thing with Garnacho... He I'm, might look at it and go, this is my time now to be starting and yeah. I've done enough to earn that start. And the manager might think, I know you can't let players tell you what to do, but he might think, you've got a point here. Let's give him a chance. Let's give him a start against um, a very beatable Crystal Palace team. Yeah. Because another thing Garnacho might be looking at going, look, you started me against one of the best teams in the league in Liverpool and then one of the worst teams in the league in Southampton. I'm on the bench. If I'd have started against Southampton, I might have scored a hat-trick. Mm. So it's a difficult one for it tonight, but it's a nice problem to have yeah. because you're not going, I've got a load of garbage, I don't know who to pick. You're going, I've got two very good attackers and it's it's a case of which one do I prefer. Yeah. Should we talk about uh, Crystal Palace? Yeah, I mean, they did well, didn't they, when uh, Oliver Glasner came in last season. Yeah. Obviously, we saw that firsthand with the performances they did against us in um, Adam Ward and they've got the, the flavour of the month haven't they in the, that, that DM role that everyone is you know he's talking about him and what a great signing he was from Blackburn and how he should have got more minutes or some minutes at the Euros and all the rest of it they've, they've made a signing in Eddie and Ketty as well um, in the summer I think he got his uh, first goal in the uh, for the, the club what are you shaking your head at? I'm not I'm not convinced by these lot really? okay I, I, I think you're the commentators curse are you? I am you, you was slagging off Luis Diaz when you the other day. Still don't think he's any good. Right. Um, Palace have been all right this season. They've won a couple of games in the League Cup. They haven't won outside <laughs> of that. They're, I knew they would have a drop off. I'm not saying they won't beat us or they're not capable of beating us. But this whole thing of like people putting Palace as like fifth and stuff in their pr pre predictions. I just That's thought, insane. I just thought it's not going to happen. They're, they're a decent team. They've lost one of their best players um, in Elise. Yeah. And I think in people's heads... People are sort of in the sort of McFred, kind of Lindelof and Maguire, like people have sort of clunked Eze and Elise into like a unit almost, haven't mm. they? They're like the sort of the tricky wingers that Palace have got, they're dangerous and they can do you. Eze is nowhere near as good as Elise is. Okay. And he's four or five years older than him. Yeah, yeah. Like he's, he's a decent player, Eze, and he can, he can damage it. And he did it to us last season. I'm not saying he's crap by any means, but I don't think Eddie Nketiah is a very good player. And he wasn't very good at Arsenal when they were making shitloads of chances every week. I don't think Eze is particularly great. I think Mark Gay is a decent player, but he's, he's you know, unless he has an absolute world-class game, he's not going to win you a match. He might stop you losing or conceding too many goals. I think Mateta's a good player and he's underrated. He gets, he should be getting some of the credit that Eze gets and that Elise so was getting. 16 Premier League goals last Yeah, season. and he's got another, what was it, four already this season. He's bagging him in last weekend. Like, he's a good player and they have got good players. But like you said, they're so beatable. Come on, we like we can't get used to really struggling against Crystal Palace. It's going to be tough, and I'm not saying we'll blow them away, but we need to look like the better team here. 
We need to go there, and whether it's 1-0, 2-1, 4-0, whatever, United look like the better team to win the game. Because they're a team full of good players, but they're, they're not a great team. Yeah, and I hate saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. When you look at their 11 and ours, there's, not, there's very few players you'd have in our starting 11 from theirs. Like, we should be able to beat Crystal Palace. Yeah. It's, it's not... You know, they're not unbeatable by any stretch of the imagination but they have to be respected yeah. listen before we get the score prediction off you if you're watching which you are otherwise are you even hearing this message take your phone out film yourself yeah like that in landscape and give us your score prediction for the game and we'll use that as part of the pre-match build up for the watch along send it to paddockmatchday at gmail.com 30 seconds is enough and we'll use that as part of our pre-match show um, give us your score prediction then our kid with all that being said, I, I do think we're going to win. I'm not expecting to batter them. It's a tough place to go. And there's, a, there's some scars there from last season. I think if they get on top or they get an early goal, it's going to be a tough one. But I think we've got players who can grind it out. We've got players who can create chances for each other. And I think we'll get a couple of goals. So I'm going to go 2-1 Manchester United. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, I'm going to go something similar. I think we will win. Yeah. And I think we should win. I'm going to go 2-0. Love that. I fancy Marcus and Diallo to get on the score sheet. Get involved in the chat in the comments. Let us know what you think. Don't forget as well to send us your score predictions. Joe, always a pleasure. Thank you very sure. much. Go and check him out on Sloppy Joe's podcast. You know where to find me as well. Make sure you are hitting like, share and subscribe. That's been Joe Smith. I'm Jay Moy. This has been the Crystal Palace Preview. Thanks for watching.